from Hollywood transcribed my friend Irma. <laughs> Another poem, my friends, another poem. When in spring the world begins to stir like a babe in the arms of its mother, I love to watch the march wind blow into one ear of Irma and out the other. (laughs) Gee, that's cute, Jane. I've written a poem about ends. Quickly, my dear, the Academy Awards will soon be announced. All right, it's about a boy and a girl who would always sit in back of a pole at the movies and Nick. A very literary subject. Let's hear it. Behind a pole sat Patricia and Stanley, happy as two cows in clover. And she would take out a box of ends so he would know when the picture was over. (laughs) And friends, if you get a box of ends, you know your worries will be over. Because ends, E-N-N-D-S, the really effective chlorophyll tablets, really stop triple O. Stop odors of body, stop odors of breath, stop other odor offense. Stop all three. Keep you fresh as a daisy all day, all over. It's amazing. But one or two tiny ends tablets daily are all you need to stop triple O. O, O, O. Ends stop triple O, 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 O. And now, ends America's most popular chlorophyll tablets are proud to present your favorite comedy show. Created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane in... My Friend Irma. Gee, Jane, what's the matter? You look so sad. Oh, it's nothing, sweetie. Are you sure? Maybe I could help you. No, thanks. I said it was nothing. All right. Uh, Oh, Jane, who is that girl in your office? I meant to ask you at lunch, but I forgot. A new girl? Yeah. Oh, I I haven't noticed her. Well, your boss, Richard, seemed very attentive to her. He did? That's funny. It escaped me completely. Mm. Well, she's very pretty. I didn't even pay any attention to what she looked like. She had lovely red hair. That's henna, because I saw all the dark roots. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jane, then you are worried. Me worried? Oh, Oh, Cookie, don't be ridiculous. I should hate to think I had to worry about some brazen little redhead with false eyelashes and a figure that... She is pretty, isn't she? (laughs) Well, just to look at. But don't you worry, Jane. You've got a great deal more inside of you than she has. Inside of me? (laughs) Well, that's a comforting thought. May interest you to know, Irma, that very few men go around carrying fluoroscopes. <laughs> but, Jane, I'd hate to think you were jealous. I never get jealous of Al. Why do you always have to bring his name up when we're talking about people? <laughs> Please, Jane, we've been through this before. Al is just as human as anybody, and I never get jealous of him. Cookie, please understand I'm not at all worried about losing Richard. In fact, I have a date with him this evening. He's coming over. Hello? Oh, hello, Jane. Uh, this is Richard. Oh, Richard, I was just about to call you. Well, if it's about our date, Jane, I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you. I'm staying at the office this evening, and... Uh... Oh, you... Uh, do you need any help? No, no, Miss Benson, the new girl, will be here. That's why I'm staying late. I want to show Gloria how we operate, and, well, you know, there just isn't time during the day. Uh, you understand, don't you? Certainly I do, and goodbye, Dr. Rhinelander. Oh, Jane, what's wrong? Nothing. Then why are you chewing your hat? Oh. Was I? It's just... It's... it's... Oh, Irma. How can he do this to me? I hate him. Men are beasts. Yes, isn't it thrilling? (laughs) Oh. Irma, this is no laughing matter. Richard alone in that office with that redhead. Who knows what can happen? Well, it's your own fault, Jane. You should work nights like the new girl. <laughs> oh, Irma, be still. I know what I'll do. I'll quit. That's what I'll do. I'll quit. Irma, listen. My quitting is a personal matter. I don't want the neighbors to know about it, okay? All right. What do you think I am, a blabbermouth? Yes. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kilpatsky. <laughs> 
Gospel girls, what's new? Jane is quitting her job. Irma. Well, don't worry, Jane. I'm not going to tell him about the redhead who's in the office with Richard tonight. <laughs> Jane, Jane, you're really quitting your job. And this redhead. Oh, please, Professor. I'd just rather not talk about it. No, no, Janie, darling. Don't let jealousy, that green-eyed monster, get the best of you. That's what ruined my marriage, that green-eyed monster. Jealousy? No, my wife. Was there a green-eyed monster? <laughs> <laughs> just a little joke to cheer you up. Yeah. Gee, I've been trying to cheer her up, too, Professor. I told Jane she can get another fellow, maybe someone like my Al. Please, Irma. A remark like that is only good for stopping hiccups. <laughs> oh, Janie, dear. Oh, Professor, stop trying to cheer me up, the two of you. I, I'm a grown woman. I, why should he treat me like this because of some redhead? What do men find so fascinating about these flaming redheads? I've known plenty, believe me. Their hair may look like it's on fire, but many turn out to be false alarms. <laughs> Yeah, but Janie, dear, don't cry. He is making you miserable now, but someday you'll be his wife, and then you'll show him what real misery is like. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Jane, is there anything I can do to cheer you up? No, Cookie, thanks. I, I've reached a decision with Richard, and I'm going through with it. If he likes Miss Benson, that's entirely up to him. In fact, I'm going to write him a letter of resignation immediately. I want him to get it in the mail the first thing in the morning. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, you chicken. <laughs> Hello, Al, honey. Well, gee, what makes you so happy? Oh, just got the news. I hear they're raising the unemployment check to thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Yep. And to think my mother wanted me to go to college. <laughs> oh, gee, Al, now you'll have real money. Oh well, ain't just counting on that. You know, little Al always got a hot deal on the fire. This one's absolutely foolproof. It sounds exciting, Al, honey. What is it? It's a special television set for watching horse races. But, Al, you can do that with any television set. Yeah, I know, but this one fixes the race. <laughs> Jane, uh, you think Richard might be interested in investing in the idea? Jane, didn't you hear me? Al, don't mention his name. You see, Jane and Richard are not S P E E C. Al, how do you spell speaking? Hey, Jane, is this on a level? Yeah, that's right, Al. What is it, his folks? No, a redhead. The big stiff. Doing that to you, Janie. Oh, well, what's the difference? If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go into the bedroom and write my letter of resignation. Oh, the poor, frustrated kid. You see, Chicken, how lucky you are with a guy like me? You'll never catch me running around with other dames. No, sir. Got my philosophy about that. Well, what is it, Al? All dames are the same. To me, they're like pinball machines. No matter how fancy they are, no matter how much they seem to light up and glow in the dark, you'll never get your money out of them. <laughs> oh, Al, is that the way you feel about me? No, chicken. With you, it's different. You're already tilted. <laughs> well... I've scribbled a note to Richard. Can we hear it, Jane? After all, Al and I are your best friends. We might be able to help you. Well, that's sweet of you kids. It's just wonderful to have friends. Well, here it is. Mr. Richard Rhinelander, dear sir. Gee, that's nice and cold. Yeah. <laughs> dear sir, I have been in your employ for the past two years and feel I have discharged my duties rather efficiently. It wasn't entirely my fault that our business association grew into a more personal relationship. And certainly nothing I have done could justify your behavior of the past 48 hours, to wit, one redhead. By your actions, I have recognized you for what you really are, an unmitigated, uncouth, unprincipled, you left out on American, <laughs> unscrupulous Lothario. I accordingly resign my position, and I never... I... And I never want to see you again. Sincerely yours, Jane Stacy. Oh, gee, Jane, you must love him. Don't be silly. I hate him. Oh, well, look, may all turn out for the best. <sighs> You're too nice a dame to worry about that guy. Hey, come on, kids. I'll treat you both to a soda. No, thanks, Al. You, you two run along without me. I'm going to stay here and read the want ads. 
Here, Irma, you drop the letter in the mailbox. I want Richard to get it the first thing in the morning. All right, Jane. Uh, put on your rubbers, chicken. Is it raining? No, but might want to take you to a movie, and them fire escapes are slippery. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Jane. you, Mr. Rhinelander. Well, Jane, I knew you misunderstood me over the phone. That's why I rushed over here. I couldn't speak in front of Miss Benson. Oh, really? No explanations are necessary, Richard. If that's what you came to now, say, please, I really... Now, please, Jane, let me explain. Miss Can't... Benson is the niece of a very important client we're trying to land. Now, frankly, she bores me to death. But I have to encourage her in her work so she'll tell her uncle. After that, we'll transfer her to the Boston office. Richard, do you mean... Oh, Jane, she... how could you think that? She's engaged, and you know what you mean to me. And here I've spent most of this afternoon fighting with Father to get you a $10 raise. For me? Mm-hmm. Oh, Richard, that's... Richard. What's the matter? Uh, 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 uh you, you, you don't look well. What? Uh, you, why, why don't you take tomorrow morning off? <laughs> I'll get the mail for well, you I've and everything. I've never felt better in my life. Jane, uh, what's the matter with you? Nothing. I just, Richard, uh, 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 what does that sign in front of the post office say? Huh? Well, I don't know. It's something about neither rain nor snow nor fire shall prevent the mailman from doing his duty. Oh, for the days of the Pony Express. <laughs> And stop, triple O. Odors of breath, odors of body, other odor offense. If you've been using old-fashioned body deodorants, mouthwashes, toothpaste, or deodorant soap to avoid offending, now here's an easier, quicker, much more effective way to keep fresh as a daisy all over all day long. O, O, O. And stop, triple O, 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 O. Just one or two tiny ENDS chlorophyll tablets daily protect you against triple O, against all three odor offenses. There's no muss, no fuss. ENDS stop triple O in minutes. You can prove it with this famous ENDS test. Rub an onion slice on your hand. Now take an ENDS chlorophyll tablet, moisten, and rub it over the same spot. The odor's gone. That's how ENDS work where odors begin inside your body to stop triple O. But remember, ENDS contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. Don't expect such lasting results from cheaper chewing gum and candy substitutes which contain so little chlorophyll. Oh, oh, oh. ENDS stop. Triple oh, 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 oh. Insist on ENDS, called ENDS because they end your worries about triple O. That's E-N-N-D-S, ENDS chlorophyll tablets. Pleasant tasting and safe as any garden vegetable. Trial size ends only 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes even more economical. Well, this time, little Jane Stacy really pulled off a beaut... Richard has turned out to be the swellest guy that ever lived, and I, like a fool, had to write him a letter calling him more names than there are in the vocabulary of a sailor's parrot. (laughs) He ever gets that letter, that's the end, that's all, it's the end. And I'm going out of my mind thinking of ways to get it back before he reads it. Irma. What, Jane? How am I going to keep that letter from Richard? Well, it's simple. What do you mean? Why don't you elope with him tonight, and then tomorrow you'll have the right to open his mail. Oh. (laughs) Irma... You, wait a minute, you've given me an idea. I won't open his mail. I'll just get to the office at 7 in the morning and I'll get the letter from the mailing room before it's distributed. Well, how will you get up so early? By going to bed right now. Irma, would you put that book down, turn out the lights? Come on. But this book is so interesting. It's all about dreams. Dreams? Yes, it explains them. You've no idea what goes on in a person's mind when they're unconscious. <laughs> I have a rough idea. <laughs> of course, I don't believe it all. This book says if a girl puts a piece of wedding cake under her pillow and dreams, she'll soon get married. 
Why don't you try it? I have, but I get hungry in the middle of the night and I eat up my future. <laughs> well, come on, put the book down, honey. You know you get nightmares when you read in bed. Like the other night, you woke up screaming that you were cold and you wanted somebody to stop the horse. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll never read Lady Godiva again. <laughs> Come on, Cook, turn out the lights, huh? This is one night I must not oversleep. All right, Jane, just give me a moment to do my face. First, the cold cream. Ugh, gee, this stuff is so chilly. Why don't they make hot cold cream? <laughs> I'll tell them, I'll tell them. Okay. Hurry up, honey, will you? Come on. All right, now, uh, cleansing cream. All night cream. All purpose cream. Beauty cream. Sour cream. <laughs> Sour cream? Yes, I'm hungry. Oh, worm, I come to you. <laughs> Jane, it takes a while to get all this makeup off I know, but I've seen him get the barnacles off a battleship in less time <laughs> Well, I'm finished Now I just want to fix these curlers in my hair All right, okay oh. Well, here goes the light Good night, Jane Good night, honey uh, Do you mind if I open the window? No, leave it closed, honey, it's raining But I can't sleep with the window closed Well, try, for my sake, huh? All right Good night. Good night, honey. Jane. Jane. Gee, she must have been tired. Huh, sleep already. Now I can open the window. Oh, Richard. Isn't Niagara Falls beautiful? I can feel the spray in my face and just... Irma! Irma, the window's open. I'm getting soaked. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. I didn't think it would come in. I'll close it. Oh, honey, please go to sleep. I've got to be at the office at 7. All right, Jane. Good night. Good night. Oh, Jane. What now? My foot itches. Well, scratch it. <laughs> I can't. It's on your side of the bed. You're closer. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, where? There. Okay. Thank you. Good night, Irma. Good night, Jane. Jane. Oh, Jane. What is it? Are you awake? <laughs> No. Oh, are you sure? Absolutely. But you spoke to me. I talk in my sleep. <laughs> Irma, darling, what's wrong now? I can't sleep. Well, try counting sheep. All right. One, two, three, five, six, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. What happened to four, seven, and ten? Oh, those are black sheep. I can't see them in the dark. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, Irma, if you don't let me sleep, I'll scream Oh, no, you'll wake everybody up Good night, Irma Good night, Jane Oh, no No, no, you don't Huh? Irma Oh, no, you don't Cookie Irma, Irma Get off your knees and stop pleading Oh, now I've really got trouble She's talking in her sleep How dare you try to kiss me I'm engaged to Al So you had better go, go Do you hear me, Van Johnson? Oh, my <laughs> Irma Get up huh? Get up, get up Oh, Jane, I had the most terrible nightmare. I didn't know what I was doing. You're telling me you sent Van Johnson away and asked for Al. <laughs> to me, that's like sending back steak and begging for horse meat. Gee, Jane, why do I get these nightmares? I don't know, honey. Try sleeping on your back. Makes me snore. Well, try sleeping on your stomach. No, I might smother. Why don't you try sleepwalking and get out of here? I've got to get up early. Well, Jane, take my advice and go right to sleep. Oh, mother. 
Oh, this can't be. Can this just is this is all a dream? Who is it? The girl did only me, Professor Kropotkin. Please let me in. It's emergency. Well, wait until we slip into robes, Professor. All right, you can come in now. Girls, I hate to bother you, but maybe you got some pots and pans. You cooking now? So who's cooking? It's raining and the water's coming through the roof. <laughs> Did you tell Mrs. O'Reilly? Well, don't be silly. She'll charge me extra for swimming privileges. <laughs> Professor, please ask Mrs. O'Reilly or ask the Martins or ask anybody, but I've got to get some sleep on us. Good night. Oh, all right, all right, Jane. Don't get excited. I'll tread water tonight. <laughs> Good night. Oh, Irma, it's past midnight. I'm just getting panicky. If not, I'm not in that office by seven, my world is ended. Irma, if you have any love for me at all, please go to sleep. All right. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't have read that book about dreams. Oh, honey, turn out the light and get in bed, or I promise you I'll... Shh. Now, we're not in. Okay. We're not in! <laughs> Chicken, it's me, Al. What is this, Grand Central Station... Well, wait till we get our robes on. We're not decent. Jane, don't have an inferiority complex. We're just as nice as anyone. Oh. <laughs> okay, Al, come on in and stay a week or two. Well, I didn't mean to barge in on you. Look, Al, it's not that I'm an unfriendly person. I like company as much as the next girl, but not at 1.30 in the morning. Get it, Al? What are you so nervous about, Janie? Al, Richard and I patched up our quarrel, and there happens to be a letter in the mail in which I call him everything in the world, and I've got to stop that letter. Oh, say, Irma, the kid's got right. Recognize your predicament, Jane. Must stop that letter. How, oh, Al? Only one man who can help us. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe? Al, got a problem. Joe, who do you know at the post office? Oh, all them guys whose pictures are on the walls. <laughs> You see, Joe, we're trying to stop a letter that's been mailed. How do I do it? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. You do not wish to tamper with the government because most of your family is with the government? Well, where, Joe? Oh, on an island in the Pacific. <laughs> well, uh, what island, Joe? Alcatraz, yeah. Well, then, um, understand your point, Joe, and respect your desire not to travel. Good night, Joe. Well, looks like you're in a tough spot, Janie. Oh, look, Al, thanks for trying, but if you'll just let me get some sleep, I'll stop that letter myself in the morning. Okay, Jane. Good night, chicken. Al, I know my face is all covered with cold cream, but would you just like to peck me on the cheek? Oh, can't take a chance, chicken. Might slip and bite off your nose. <laughs> Good night and pleasant dreams, chicken. Good night, Al, honey. Jane, let's just sit here and talk about Al. Irma, turn out the lights. Please. Oh, my goodness, it's almost two and I should get up at six. How will I get eight hours sleep in four hours? Well, you can drag it out. Sleep slow. Oh. <laughs> Irma, for the last time, if you make one more sound and until I tell you to, so help me, I don't know what I'll do. You have my promise. Good night. <laughs> Irma, it's the telephone. It's ringing. Answer it, will you? Well, it's on your side of the bed. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, hello. Richard? What time is it? Irma, it's noon. I know. Why didn't you wake me? Well, you told me not to make a sound until I heard from you. Oh. <laughs> Richard? Uh, uh, Richard, th th there's something I must tell you. You see, the letter that I... I mean, I... Uh, uh, Richard, Richard, I... Excuse me, Irma, he knows, he knows, he knows. Oh, Jane. Oh, Jane, honey. Gosh, honey, you're crying. Here, here, I have some Kleenex in my purse. Oh, Jane, look. What? You're going to hate me. Why? I forgot to mail the letter. <laughs> what? Oh, bless you. Hello, Richard. Oh, it's nothing, Richard. No, nothing happened. I just overslept. Me crying? That's just ridiculous. Of course, I think the world of you. I always have thought the world of you. I never thought anything different. I'll be right down, Richard. Irma, you are a doll. Oh, cookie. 
But, Jane, you kissed me. And I'll do it again. All right, but don't tell Al he's so jealous. <laughs> Back to Irma and Jane in a moment. But first... Oh, oh, oh. And stop. Triple oh, 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 oh. Remember the scientific odor test that proved end stop triple O stop odors of breath, odors of body, and other odor offense for over eight out of ten people? Well, these amazing results were substantiated the other day at the annual meeting of a national scientific group. A leading medical authority stated... And for our test, I selected the chlorophyll tablets known as ENDS. Our tests included executives, office workers, and factory workers, too. General odor of body and breath were most successfully treated. Yes, after hundreds and hundreds of examinations, science proved ENDS are really effective. Just one or two tiny ENDS chlorophyll tablets daily actually do stop triple O because ENDS contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. O, O, O. ENDS stop triple O, 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 O. But beware of cheaper chewing gum and candy substitutes that contain so little chlorophyll or that do not state their chlorophyll content on the label. Keep fresh as a daisy all over, all day long, with ENDS. They work inside your body where odors start to stop triple O. Stop all three odor offenses. ENDS give more complete, more lasting protection than any old-fashioned body deodorant, soap, mouthwash, or toothpaste can possibly give you. O, O, O. And stop! Triple O, oh, O, oh, O, oh, O, oh. O! So insist on ENDS, pleasant tasting, easy to use, and safe as any garden vegetable. That's E-N-N-D-S, ENDS chlorophyll tablets. Trial size, only 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes, even more economical. The redhead is gone. I'm back at the office with a lush $10 raise, and the world is just wonderful again. Irma? Irma is still busy with her dreams and trying to analyze them. Oh, Jane, last night I had a wonderful dream. I dreamed that Al turned into an elephant. That's a wonderful sign. Why? Now you'll never forget me. (laughs) Me, Jane Stacy, I'd like to turn into a train. So I could get away fast from my friend, Irma. (laughs) My Friend Irma is a Cy Howard production and is written by Park Levy, who writes the script with Stanley Adams. Pat Burton is associate producer. Marie Wilson has starred as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin and Life Erickson as Richard. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Folks, as friends of my friend Irma, we're sure you'll be interested in reading the delightful story about our show, written by Professor Kropotkin, which appears in the March issue of Radio TV Mirror Magazine, on sale now at your favorite newsstand. You can't have a sparkling personality if you don't have sparkling eyes. And you can't have sparkling eyes if they're tired, dull, red, from lack of sleep, driving, wind, or glare. So get hygiene. One or two drops in each eye float away that tired eye feeling. Leave eyes refreshed. Then your whole face lights up. Hygiene is like a prescription. Contains Lexitol, a tonic for your eyes. Safe, gentle. Hygiene. E-Y-E-G-E-N-E. At drug counters everywhere. Trial size only 25 cents. Larger size is even more economical. Be with us next Sunday at this time when ENDS, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, again bring you my friend Irma. Carl Caruso speaking. Now stay tuned for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately on most of these CBS stations. My friend Irma was transcribed. This is the CBS Radio Network.